Alright, this video is going to be about connecting to the cluster and submitting uh, submitting jobs to the cluster. It will probably be mostly useful for people at Penn State, but it could also be useful somewhere else if you're using a, uh, a PBS cluster system. So the very, the very first thing you need to do is make sure that you have a cluster account, which you should talk to someone about because there's no way that you can, uh, that I know of, that you can do that through a web page or anything like that. You have to actually email someone and make sure you uh, have an account. But once once you're confirmed that you do have an account, um, you need to open up a terminal window first. And if you're on a Linux or Mac or, or some kind of Unix machine, that's not a problem. You already have a terminal window somewhere. If you're on Windows, it's a little more of a hassle. You have to go out and uh, find some kind of software to, to help you with that. Uh, there's something called SSH Secure Shell for Windows. Putty is another option. What I'm showing here is Sigwin, which is a Linux emulator for Windows, and I, I like that best. Um, so you might want to go that route if you so choose. So once you have an account and you have a terminal of some kind, and like I said, it's only really an issue if you're on Windows to begin with, uh, you type the command SSH, which stands for Secure Shell, then your username, which will be the same as your uh, Penn State username, and then at whatever the host name is. So one of the main clusters is Cyberstar at Penn State, so I can use cyberstar.psu.edu. And that's it. And that just tells it to connect with this ID to this system securely. Press enter. It'll ask for your password, which is the same as your uh, your Penn State logon. And now we're logged in. So if you, I mean, if you're familiar with Linux, this is basic for you. But if you're not, there's a couple basic commands to help you get around in the terminal. The first one is ls, which lists the contents of the current directory. Notice in my prompt here, the orange thing, the little squiggle, tells what directory I'm in. So the squiggle means you're you're in your home directory. So by default, it gives every new user a home directory. And you can see here I have a scratch and a work directory, and it gives you those by default too. So the, the scratch system has an unlimited file storage, and usually your work directory is where you'll put um, most of your files. Okay, so ls lists the contents of the current directory. cd is change directory, so if I want to change into my work directory, I can do that. Notice how the orange directory uh, listing updated in my prompt. If you want to return to the previous, if you want to go up a level, that is, you can do dot dot, which means the previous level. Um, yeah, and, and that's about that. Some, some other useful ones, I mean, there's a lot of commands, and you'll probably only need a few basic ones to start. A useful one is copy, cp, so cp file1, file2 will copy the contents of file1 into a file named file2. Um, the move command, one file two will not copy it'll actually rename file one to, to be file two okay so those are the basics let me show you how to submit jobs on the cluster since maybe you already are familiar with Linux commands uh, so the first thing you need is some kind of job submission script so let me see if I can find somewhere where I have one of those already set up uh, okay so the, the Penn State clusters are using a PBS system, which is Portable Batch Submission. That's the engine that runs the, cl the cluster queue for the jobs. But there are other there are other um, systems out there that you might be dealing with. So the submission scripts look something like this. You have two lines at the beginning that give commands to PBS. Here you, you have a dash L flag and you tell it what wall time you want to request. Here I'm request, uh, excuse me, requesting one hour. The second line tell with the uh, J flag OE tells it to join the output and error streams. Basically, after your job finishes, you'll get a file back that says uh, this is all the the output and error from the um, from standard from standard out and standard error that happened during your job. The first thing you usually want to do is is CD to the directory where you called the job from, which it won't do by default, which is why you need to include this command. And then last thing is you tell it what command you were originally you were yeah, that you wanted to run. 
Um, so just like from the command line, you'd call your own executable. That, that's the same thing that's happening here, except you're just saving it in a shell script. So let me get out of this. So we have the script saved, and when you want to submit it as a cluster job, you just do queue sub, submit to the queue, and then the name of the file. And I don't want to do this right now because I don't actually want to submit it to the queue right now. Um, but that's how you would do it when you are so inclined. So after you submit something, um, you can check your own running jobs by using qstat with the u flag and then your own ID, like that. So I don't have any jobs running, so it didn't return anything. But if you just do qstat without any flags, it'll list all the jobs of everybody on the system that are running right now. And you can see this is Cyberstar. There's a lot of, of different things running right now. And another helpful command is um, to delete all of your jobs. Actually, I kind of forget what, hold on a sec, let me look at what that actually is. Q, okay, yeah. So it looks like this. Q del for delete from the queue. Um, and then you give it this command, Q select U G H 33. So inside the dollar sign brackets, you're selecting all the jobs that belong to you and then you're telling it to delete them. And that's how you would kill all of your current running jobs. Okay, well that's the basics of getting on the cluster and, and getting around a little bit. One cool thing that I should mention is that this Penn State uses a distributed file system between its different, uh, different clusters. So if you're on Cyberstar or one of the Lion clusters or whatever else, you have access to the same files. So they're all hosted in one, the same place, and then all the systems access them. Um, oh, and I forgot about file transfer. So you can, from the terminal, you can transfer files. In Windows, it's a little bit of a hassle, so there's a tool called WinSCP. That's W-I-N-S-C-P. looks something like this. You can Google it and download it yourself. Uh, so when you install it and, and run it, you get something that looks like this. On the left-hand side is your local files. And then on the right-hand side is whatever system you logged into. So um, you log into this just like you did SSH. And then over here, you can see the same directory structure we saw before with Scratch and Work. I can go into Work. I can look at my files and drag and drop them back and forth from local to remote and, and vice versa. So that's a pretty useful thing, too. Okay, that's, that's all for the cluster basics right now. Thanks for watching.